In this video, I'm going to explain 10 tips and tricks that should greatly speed up your workflow in make.com. I've been using make.com for years. When I started using it, it was called Integromat. And these are some of the best tips I've come up with that I'd like to share with you right now. So to get a basic but extremely useful one out of the way, we have shift and click. It's pretty embarrassing how long it took me to realize that you could do this within make. Just hold shift and you can drag a box around any amount of modules you want. You can then press control C or command C or copy modules. Then you can paste those into a new scenario. Again, very, very useful. The next tip is to use JSON. JSON is a type of structured data which can greatly help to improve both the quality and efficiency of your output from OpenAI or Claude. So for example, in this case, we are trying to get social media text for four different social networks. And we're doing this in one call to OpenAI's GPT-40, just asking it to generate a one-liner social media post for each of those. I go and click show advanced settings at the very bottom, make sure to select JSON object and parse the JSON response. If I run that, then let's see what happens. So I've zoomed in here and we see the result. Since we've parsed this, it's effectively responded with four different variables. So then we can go in to Facebook and say Facebook pages, create a post. I've already set up my connection here, but within the message, I can then select that one Facebook post text from the output. And then I can do the same for Twitter and LinkedIn. So instead of having to call this four different times, I call it once. This is just scratching the surface on using JSON within your scenarios, but it's an easy one that you can get started with. The next tip is about how to update many connections at once. I'm going to import a blueprint from our community to explain. This is an AI blogging and social media system blueprint. If you need to update many connections at once, then you can do it using the DevTools Chrome extension. So for example, I need to select a Claude account because I've just imported this scenario, but I can press Control, Shift and I, and then go to this Make Chrome extension. If you do not have it installed, then go to the Chrome extension link and add it to Chrome. Then go to Tools and Swap Connection. Then select the Source Module you see there. That's Article Outline, Source Module 87. And then do not select a Target Module. Once I select Run, then that automatically swaps out the connection for every other anthropic module within the scenario. The next tip is to use a Set Variable Module. So if you're going to use the same variables a lot throughout a scenario, it can be helpful to add a module in to set the variable. So I'm gonna just type set variable. I'm gonna call this Claude model name. So throughout this scenario, we're manually selecting the model for every single call to Anthropic Claude. When the model changes, then it would be handy to be able to change this in one place. So I'm gonna select map here and then hard code the, that as a variable name within this. And then I can select map and select that Claude model name there. I need to make sure to update that in every place. Next up is a tip around using routes. So for routes, they or, they execute in a specific order. It does not always matter if you have filters set up, but sometimes it does. And in this case, this is actually executing second and this is executing first. What we can do is unlink all of these and then link them again. If you link them again, the filters actually persist. When I started, I initially assumed that the filters would be deleted, which is why I did not do this. So that's a quick tip for you if you did not already know it. The next tip is to use an unpassable filter. Sometimes you want to unlink a certain part of the flow. So you want to test not fully end to end, but from the starting point to a certain point in the scenario. If you try to unlink that and press run once, we get a message at the bottom to say a transformer should not be the last module in a route. What you can do is link them back together and set up a filter. The filter can be one equals two. So that filter will always be false. And if we try to run that scenario, it will not pass that filter, but we will still be able to run it. The next tip is very basic, but very useful is to right click, rename and actually rename your module. If you have that as default, this module will just be called Anthropic Claude. Whereas if we name the module, then it's much easier to reference later on. For example, in this scenario, there's a lot going on. We're calling Claude quite a lot. And then we're eventually uploading the post to WordPress. When we're constructing this, it's very nice to be able to go down through the list and selecting the correct variable that you need. For example, this one I called HTML format intro. And I know this is the Claude response that I want to go at the start. The next tip is to use the general functions, specifically the if statement. And if we add in if statements within your text boxes and your prompts, 
it can really help to simplify your scenarios so you do not need to add unnecessary routers and complicate your workflow. For example, in this case, I have an Airtable base. I have tone of voice as an optional field. When I'm sending this prompt to Claude, I have an if statement so that if tone of voice is present, then it's gonna pass this particular part of text of the prompt right in a tone of voice. Otherwise it passes nothing. To do this, go to the general functions up here, which is this cog icon and select if. So then we can select our functions as needed. So if tone of voice, you know, write in a tone of voice. And then afterwards, this is the fallback. This is the if tone of voice is not present, then write in a professional tone of voice. Again, we can use this quite a lot. In this example, I've actually also added in a kind of a piece of randomization to the prompting. If a random number between zero and one floating point number is less than 0 0.5, then it will output this. So around 50% of the time, it will ask Claude to output a maximum of 150 words, and 50% of the time, it will get it to output 250 words. Of course, the language model is probably not going to follow that directly, but it might be a bit of a guide. Next up, we have instant versus scheduled triggers. By default, a lot of these a lot of the starting points on your automations are going to run on a schedule. For example, at the bottom left, we see this will search these Airtable records every 15 minutes. Every time that schedule is run, it's going to use an operation within Make, and you have a limited number of operations on your account every single month. If you have it run on a schedule, things are not going to be snappy and fast. For example, if you're using Airtable. On Airtable, there are two approaches to this to trigger things instantly. For example, you can create a button to Airtable which triggers a webhook. Every time this button is pressed, or this one, it triggers this webhook within Airtable and then that will perform a specific action. If you're on a paid version of Airtable, you can set up an automation. So for example, if you update the status of this record, then an automation will run which will trigger the webhook. You just need to insert your webhook ID there. I've covered this in much more detail in another video, so check out the link above for that. You can also use the HTTP module to call lots of different APIs that might not be natively supported within make.com. For example, I'm making a HTTP request here to the file.ai service, where I'm getting this to generate Flux1 images for the article. I also have this module, which is calling the data for SEO API to scrape Google to find relevant YouTube videos to add to the article. This might look a bit complicated, but it's actually straightforward enough once you know what type of structure that the service wants when you call their API. And lastly, you often need to test scenarios constantly while you're developing them. You can just right click and select run this module only and then provide some of the variables that are required to run that module. We have a pretty long prompt for perplexity in this particular scenario, but we're only passing in one variable, which is the article title. We can run this module by just providing and hard coding a test article title for this. For example, what is the feature of AI? I'll select OK, and then this will call just perplexity directly. And that has worked successfully, and then we can see the result of that, which is great for testing. If you like this video, then you're going to love our community where you'll get access to all of our automations, chat with us live through our weekly workshops, and you can get support from myself, Daniel, and others through the community. Thanks for watching.